everyone, it's Lisa from My Dreaming Soap. Welcome to my channel. Now today's soap is going to be sort of a little bit different to what I normally do. And as you can see, I've got a whole variety of little pots here. What I'm doing is I'm doing a range of um, super luxury soaps. And they're going to be very simple soaps, but it's going to be the ingredients that's going to count in them. And what's triggered me to do this range is that I've got a selection of very gorgeous fragrance oils from Stock Fragrance. Now the Stock Fragrance oils are really, really gorgeous, but they are really, <laughs> really quite expensive. They're sort of like, gosh, um, three, four times more expensive than your fragrance oils that you get from places like Nature's Garden, Nurture's Soap, that sort of things. So I want to be really careful of how I use them. I'm always really happy with my existing soap recipe. This soap recipe has got lots of lovely butters in it. But what I want to do with this range is add some extra super duper stuff to it to make it an even more luxurious recipe. So I'm going to make it a goat milk soap. Now I'm using goat milk powder rather than actual goat milk just so I can put extra things in rather than having to do the whole ice cube method and everything. So this is my goat milk powder and with this powder what I've done is weighed out enough powder that would have reconstituted the water that's in my recipe as if it was full goat's milk okay so that's what I've got in there then next in here I've got some liquid silk so some people put tuss of silk and that in their recipe a little blob of it I'm putting in some liquid silk in mine liquid silk is great because I can just add it straight into my soap I don't have to worry about dissolving in the lye or anything so that'll give us that lovely, gorgeous quality that silk gives us to our recipe. The next thing I've got here is aloe vera. Now, again, with aloe vera, you can make your recipe with all aloe vera. But remember, I'm already doing a goat milk. I want goat milk and aloe vera. Now, the aloe vera that I use is a 10 times concentrated aloe vera. So where you know you normally get aloe vera juice and it's quite watery. This has basically had the water extracted out of it. So it's 10 times strength. So what I've done as well here is I've, similar to what I did with the goat's milk, I said, how much water have I got? Therefore, if I wanted to pretend this was all aloe vera, I worked out how much aloe vera I would need. So you can see I've got full goat's milk, full aloe vera and silk. So this should make a super duper luxurious bar combined with all the butters and that that I've got. Other than that, just some micas. These are going to be very simple soaps, just plain soaps. There's not going to be any patterns or swirls or anything. So I've got some oolala -la mica and that's from Pure Rock Colours. And I've got some golden shimmer from Mica Mama. And that's just going to go as a bit of a mica swirl on the top of my soap. Now for this first luxury soap that I'm making, my stock fragrance, fragrance that I'm using is Oud Rose. Now as this is a very simple soap, I can just do some things I don't normally do on screen in a little bit more detail. So first thing I'm doing is I'm just going to take my mica and pre-disperse it, mix it in with some of the oils from my batch. There's lots of ways of putting mica into your soap. Some people just plop it straight on top of the soap batter and blend it in. That's absolutely fine to do. The reason I don't like doing that is by blending it in and putting the bell of your stick blender over your mica, it incorporates air bubbles into your soap. And also, it means you actually have to blend your soap more. Whereas I'm much more of a prefer to get my soap to the emulsion stage or the trace stage I like and then stir everything in. I may still blend this in a little bit. Okay, so there's that just mixed into some oil so it's all nice and smooth. Tiny little bit again. 
Okay, now amounts, <clears throat> I don't really measure it. I don't normally measure everything. But really with this mica drizzle, uh, sort of two to one is quite good. I just like it, so it's still quite nice and thick and dense, but it is definitely gonna, gonna pour and gonna drizzle. I don't want it to be too thick. Okay, so there's those done, ready for later. So what I'm gonna do to actually get these into my soap is, these two liquid additives, I'm actually going to blend into this goat milk powder now to get a bit of a slurry with the goat milk powder to help prevent any lumps that I could have. Other ways that you can do it, you could literally just tip your goat milk powder straight into your oils and blend that in with your oils. You could blend it in at trace. I mean, there's all sorts of ways you can get it into your soap. So I'm just going to put these two additives in here and the reason I've chosen to do this way is sometimes you know when you have I don't know if you've ever tried mixing corn flour or corn starch on it together is sometimes if you blend it into a big volume you can end up getting lumps and bumps and it can be a bit hard to disperse so this way by me blending it into a smaller amount of liquid I can spend the time getting this all nicely dispersed and smoothed out and even first of all before I even introduce it into my soap. See, can you see there's a few lumps and bumps in there? So I think. I'm going to get my mini blender. with that now I'm quite likely to still blend that into my soap but it just means because I'm happy that it's all really lovely and smooth before it even goes in there I won't have to do too much blending and what I just need to be a bit wary of is I'm putting quite a lot of additives in this soap so therefore that could cause it to accelerate a bit so these are my melted oils and they are just above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so about 84 degrees as I've just measured them. And this is my light solution and my sodium lactate. This is low 70s, which is absolutely fine. So let's just get these into each other and I'm just pouring very slowly just to minimise the possibility of bubbles. Because if this is a luxury soap, I want it to look beautiful and smooth. So I'm going to add in my mica. Now, I don't want the really strong pink, so I've weighed out how much mica I'm using here, but I may not actually use it all, so I'm just going to put a bit in first. Let's see what that colour gives us. I like it quite like that. Just looking at my camera, it looks darker on the camera than it does. It's quite likely that that goat milk may lighten that a bit. So let's get that in. Okay, so remember that's our goat milk, but a goat milk powder, so that's effectively made it a 100% goat milk soap. But also that was our aloe vera juice. And that is again was that concentrated aloe vera. So again, it's 100% aloe vera and my silk. Let's give this a little blend up. Okay, so now I'm thinking I would like that a bit pinker. I'm 
I'm happy that everything's beautifully blended together now, nice and smooth, no lumps of additives or anything. So the last thing I'm going to do is add in my fragrance. Okay, and I'm going to keep an eye on that because I want to pour some little sample soaps first because this is a new fragrance and, and actual soap in my range. So I've just got my little cloud sample moulds. I'm just going to fill those up. If this starts to thicken too much, which I don't think it will, it looks like it's staying pretty fluid, I'll then get it into the main mould. But I think we're okay. I'm only holding this tray up wobbly in the air because it's difficult to fit to pour a filled jug. It's starting to thicken up now. I'm going to leave those as they are and then the scrapings of the jugs can go into those. So I'm just going to get this very simply poured into the mould. This beautiful mould is from Custom Craft Tools. Yeah, it's just thickening now. And you see it's getting a, quite a, getting to sort of almost a medium trace on here. Now I think that'll do. The rest of that pot, not I completely scraped out, I'm going to just use it to fill, finish those clouds off. Okay, look, can you see how that's thickened? Okay, at the moment all I'm doing is I'm not trying to do a swirl as such. I'm just trying to even the soap out so the bars are nice and even. And then we'll give it another bang down. And then we'll see if we can get this mica swirl in the top. Actually, the texture of this is making me want to texture the soap, so I might do that with the gold mica on it. There's just something very pleasurable, isn't there, if you if you make soap yourself, about mucking around with a textured top when that soap is just at the right texture. Okay, there's that done. Very simple. I'm going to now pop my top on it and then put that through to gel. Now even though it's a goat milk soap, I am going to still gel it. So here's 
our soup the well not the next day it's about 36 hours later so as we can see we've got our cute little sample cloud soaps so they'll go in samples with any orders and then our main loaf right so let's get the main soap cut i'm not going to bother slicing off any big end bits or anything just because it's such a plain bar of soap let's just see if we can get this lined up really nicely plain design inside the key thing for me is the quality of the soap so we're looking for a nice smooth soap with no air bubbles and you can see here we have got a lovely lovely smooth soap at the moment can you see there's almost some slight discoloration and what will happen is as this then cures this pinky color will then go through to the middle of that soap just needs to be exposed to the air a bit but hopefully as you can see there i'm really happy with that there's no bits of unmixed additive and we've got a beautiful smooth soap no inkling at all there of any bubbles or air holes or anything And here to finish off is a final photo of the soap. This is a picture of the soap taken sort of about a couple of days after it was cut. So you can see that pink colour did even out. And I guess it's sort of kind of quite strange because normally you think about discoloration coming from a fragrance oil or something. And this fragrance oil doesn't discolour. What it is, is all the combination of those additives and the goat's milk and everything once they got exposed to the air then the colour was able to come through and give this nice consistent pink colour that we've got. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap folks. If you have it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment in the comment section below as these things really help my channel to grow. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!